so on. Now I'm on to lovely. Hello, everybody. Happy to have you here with us today. My name is Bettina Gordon-Wayne. I'm a journalist and the creator of the It's Never Too Late to Live Your Dreams brand. And I'm super excited about the conversation I'm having today with my dear friend, Prasanna Diana Manuela, who lives in Australia. It is Today, for me, Wednesday evening, for her Thursday morning, it's like it's a world <laughs> apart, which is funny. And yet we are together here meeting on Zoom for an extremely, extremely uh, important and wonderful conversation. So first of all, <laughs> good morning, Prasanna. Would you please introduce yourself a little bit? Good morning, Bettina. Thank you so much for inviting me back again. I love um, working with you real pleasure to be here thank you so much so yes for you who haven't met me before i'm prasana diana manuela i'm an inspirational speaker feminine prosperity creatrix and international best-selling author of the book elemental woman and i support women entrepreneurs conscious women entrepreneurs to rise to the next level i help them to kind of go through a rebirthing process within themselves when they have this feeling that there's a shift happening and they need to express that in their lives yes in their lives and in their businesses and in their business yes it, it's both so for some women it's more in their lives so, and for some women, it is the business and for a lot of them, it's both because when we're changing internally and we are, we are birthing ourselves, we're tapping into new parts of our being, of course, that affects our intimate relationships, our relationships with our children. And it has a huge effect how we look at our own business that we may have run already for 10 or 20 years or the message that we've had will change because we have had an internal shift. Yes, yes. Thank you. And uh, you were one of the most uh, popular speakers on my It's Never Too Late, Too Late to Live Your Dreams Summit that I recently hosted. So that's why I also wanted to continue our conversations because it's so important. So before we hit the record button, we were talking about that now it is so like for the survival of our planet, I would want to say, I really want, want to say that it is so important for us women yeah. to step into a leadership position yeah. and what i so strongly believe is especially the women that are like 40 plus that are called yeah. for to stepping to stepping up and when i say into leadership position yes of course that could mean in your business or in your community but it can also mean in your home life in your family in your smaller circle it can be small and big it doesn't it does not really matter so much how how big how big the circle is what really matters is that we as mature women who have worked on us who have done the inner work that we are stepping into the into the the spotlight so to say and that our voices are much more heard and Prasanna, you had a beautiful, beautiful explanation to why we women 40 plus are arriving now. And I think many, many, very many of us are feeling it. Yes. That it is time. And you have a beautiful explanation to how do we get to there where many of us are now. This is a time for change and for us to step up in a bigger life, I want to say. Yes. I think we're we're really asked in this crucial time it is this we are in a kind of a crisis from one point of view and i like to look at it more as an opportunity but as a global community and especially women we are really asked to step into our bigger shoes into the expansion of ourselves really meeting our higher self running this life the bigger show and that's different for everyone you know as we've talked before we all have a personal curriculum so what that looks like is different for everyone but it is stepping into our soul calling that's what it is and it doesn't matter i mean big or small what what does it mean anyway because yeah. you know if you live in your calling truly your soul's calling in your life your rippling effect will be incredible yes yes whether it is in the local community or whether it's in the global community whether it is as a school teacher or whether it is as a female entrepreneur it doesn't actually really matter as long as we're stepping into our soul calling and that's what i'm most passionate about is not so much 
helping women to create a business, but helping them to step into embracing their soul calling and then build the business around that. That's very different focus. Yes, very. Really totally. you're, yeah, you're, you're creating from the inside out. It, from the inside out. It's becoming a new woman first. Yes. yes. And why do you think it is um, that, we won't, that we women often hear that soul calling stronger and stronger once we approach 40 and then beyond? Yes. So I think for a, a woman has much more faces in life than a man has. A man has faces too, but for a woman, especially if she creates a family, we have kind of various seasons in our life. And so when we are coming into our forties, like sort of 42 to 49, sometimes there's a bit of a discontent. We're kind of at a loose end. And the theme in the forties, a lot of the time is, okay, do what you've done before, but do it in a different way, right? You have to find a new way of using the skills and the gifts that you have gathered in your life, but use them in a different way. And that may look like you worked as an employer and all of a sudden in the 40s you go, I want to run my own show. I want to create my own business. I want to be able to work from home and have more balance in my life. You know, not be so tired and exhausted, but actually embrace more the feminine principles to keep me in harmony and in health and wealth, right? Yeah. So, you know, so, so that's using the skills, but using them in a different way. That's the theme in the 40s. And if she has done that, or even if she done that or not done it, where if she continues on in her 40s, there's a rising discontentment happening towards the end of the 40s. A lot of the time, that's what I see in women. And that is <clears throat> often the children are starting to become a little bit more independent at that point. So a lot of their energy has gone into on top of their work, raising a family, taking care of the house, the meals, the health of the family, helping everyone to succeed. It's a big job, helping your kids to succeed and your partner to succeed. And in some respects, she often has left herself behind because her focus has been on everyone else. And so this is inner discontent rising. My time is coming. If I don't do it now, when will I do it? So that's this feeling of, I'm fed up with life. And a lot of women say that I'm grump, grumpy with my family members. I'm snappy. I'm sick of them. And it's not that she doesn't love them anymore, but she's always put them before herself. And so now it's this hunger of, if I don't get my thing done this life, if I don't get it done now, when will I? You said something very profound in this uh in general, but also in this one sentence when you said, if I don't, don't get, in, get it done in this life, when do I? I, I? I remember when I was 42, I woke up one morning and I was looking around, I was looking at my husband and the, you know, the house that we had at that point, And I was thinking, my God, is this all there is to life? That's it. Yeah. And I mean, That's I love it. him. We are, still, we, we are together. This is the best idea that I ever had to marry him, you know? Yes. But I was laying next to him and the house and everything, I thought that so there's something in me that yes. is my soul's calling. Yes. That yes. That needs to be expressed. And I feel so many women have that. And so for me, it's so funny uh, because, you know, you and I in age, we're not that far apart, but your children are grown. I have a six year old. <laughs> uh, so, so for me, when I woke up at 42, like there was the, the, the calling towards motherhood. And now that he is six, it's again, now I'm in the next, so the, the late 30, uh, 40s, 30s, the late 40s, exactly what you said, it's like this, the, the next, the discontentment, there's, there's something that needs to come out and be birthed. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And it's strong, it is important. Yes. Yes. I want to speak it out. And I think so many women feel that. Absolutely. It's a hunger. It's yes. like such a hunger growing. And so women can go two ways. They can shut that voice down and they, can, and they can tell themselves, I should be happy because I have a nice husband and a nice house and beautiful children and a nice car or whatever. And drown that voice out. I should be happy. I should only be happy with that. Not allow I, I should be happy because I have all this stuff. But what happens is actually this. Our life force, with, which is our soul force, is activating us and asking us to grow because the nature of the soul 
which is love and light always wants to expand and grow mm. right mm. as a human being we can reason it with our head and going i got a good life i shouldn't complain but our soul goes there's more to life than this i can do more than this i can impact the world in a bigger way than I have been. And it's because just like the tree is always yearning to grow bigger branches, more leaves, more flowers, more fruit, our soul yearns the same way. Yes. Yearns yes. to grow and expand. How in your work, because you've been doing this for over a decade, working with women, helping exactly bringing their soul calling in, into the world and then in a way, whatever they see fit or is best for them. But what do you see? Like how many of us allow ourselves to dream bigger? Or do you see more women stepping up and saying, okay, so now this is it. It's really challenging for most women. So when I work with women, especially if I work with them over a longer period of time in, in this rebirthing process, we spend a lot of time dropping into our desire and soul yearning, soul mm -hmm. desire, soul yearning. And a lot of women, they, they, they feel a lot of tears and they come and they say, wow, I have not even given myself permission up till now to feel that. That's why I said, you know, a lot of women shut that voice down. So in fact, so we're creating space to actually feel what the yearning is. Because if you don't feel what your desire and your yearning is, how are, how are you going to live it? How are you going to create it? How are you going to put voice to it? You can't. Mm -hmm. You have to actually create that space first. And that takes courage. Because a lot of the time, when we truly listen to our desire, to that hunger within, change will happen. And here's the next thing. A lot of, a lot of women are afraid of change. Because for some, it may mean the end of a marriage. For some, it may mean that their life is going into a different direction. And of course, that's the unknown, right? So human beings have a fear of the unknown. Not the soul. The soul goes, give it to me. I want to grow. I don't care. But as a human being, the conscious controlling mind wants to know exactly what's going on. And so they'll put a spanner in the piece and going, no, 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 you can't do that. Don't feel your desires. This is dangerous because you don't know where you're going. <laughs> yes. Yes. Question, because I would like to put this into perspective of what's going on right now. So 2020 will always be known as the year of the pandemic and trusting or believing what some experts or many experts are predicting is that we may be in this in this weird stage that we're in right now for another maybe 18 months even 24 months so we are talking a year maybe potentially two years and what's happening around the world for many and i just want to speak to to about to women right now about women is that some of us we have lost our jobs i mean talking about change you know we have lost our income we have lost our jobs and are now in that very vulnerable state of thinking, okay, what's next? Where exactly where you say, but this is also the opportunity to really re-envision your life and also what you're going to do going into the future using the skills in a different way. And other women that have had very high flying careers now have to maybe the first time in a decade or two, the opportunity to really step back and think like, oh, okay, I had great success the last 10, 20 years, but do I want to be with this company and doing what I'm doing for another 20 years moving forward? So actually we are now in a time that change has been put upon us. We haven't even looked for it. It just happened. So how is this maybe even the most on one and vulnerable time, but maybe also the most fruitful potentially? Exactly. I, you know, I like to look at it and that's the way I look at this time, not primarily as a pandemic time, but I'm looking at it as an awakening time, a birthing time. We're basically rebirthing the world and we are rebirthing ourselves. It's the biggest opportunity in our entire lifetime. In fact, it's a privilege to be alive right now. And so to miss that time would be the saddest opportunity. You know, it's like, it would be the saddest thing. So for me, it's like, even though, you know, my business is challenged too, you know, I had to cancel a, um, a workshop tour. Uh, I can't sell the retreats I was going to offer. So, you know, it affects all of us. And at the same time, 
I'm going, thank you for this incredible opportunity because it's going to push me to grow and expand. So I want to invite you who are listening to that to really embrace this as the biggest opportunity in, in your life. So if anything you have held back from in your life or put off, now is the time. Don't put it off any longer. Don't hold back any longer. It is really the time for you to blossom and step into um, your life's calling. What, why are you here? What's your purpose? And live that and contribute. Now is the time. Now yeah. is the time. Yeah. And uh, I just want to add, uh, because there's so much, many of us have experienced real loss and real pain. And um, you know that, but, the, 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 uh, the women watching us actually will not know, but a month ago, I lost a most beautiful, wonderful, important man. I, I called him my adoptive father. He died in a nursing home in New York City only one week after they had the first COVID-19 cases. And this loss is even like, I'm now also driven by this can't be for nothing. You know, there's like life is short. We never know. And I'm also very touched when I read about, about people dying young in accidents or so. I'm so, so touched by that because we never know. And something good, my goodness, must come out of all the pain and suffering that we see and so many have experienced. So it's like, but I don't want to focus there. I want to focus on what's next, the beauty that has to come out of this. I'm, I'm even more motivated by that now than I was before. It's true. It's true. You know, I mean, when you were saying that, I, it took me back to 1995, where I lost my second baby two days after birth which was a major event. I mean, you know, loving a child, preparing to love this child, it, it lives for two days. You have all this milk available to feed this child and nourish and nurture this child. And then all of a sudden this life is gone. It, it was one of the most impact um, moments of my life. And the interesting thing was, I grew so much from this experience. Then when a few years later, I looked back, and I had this conversation going on in my life. If I had the choice of having this child back or choosing the growth I have regained since, what would I choose? And it was so easy for me. It was definitely the growth because I was becoming really? a new And it put me on my life path. It actually awakened my calling. You see, around that time, I was supporting women to, I was supporting them with yoga therapy to birth their babies naturally, to really trust their bodies, to, they can do it. And then my work over a 20 year period changed to now I'm helping women to rebirth themselves mm -hmm. and either rebirth a business or create a new business from it. So it's like, it's doing the same thing in a different way, but I would have never got to that. Mm -hmm. Had I not lost my, my son, that was the act. That was actually what activated this whole shift in my life. That is a very profound statement that you say you would choose the growth because also maybe not big. Is it because you would have been the mother of one child and so your gift and your path touched many more lives? You know, it wasn't even, I wasn't even reasoning it. It was just my soul went, you know, and it goes back to what I said before, our soul desires to grow and expand. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like living in a box. It doesn't like staying small. And a lot of us have chosen very safe lives. And in some ways, it's kept us small. It's kept our soul expression in this lifetime limited. And so as we age and we're becoming aware of mortality, we're becoming aware that we're not going to be forever in this life, mm -hmm. right? And that happens when you're getting closer to 50, closer to 60, you're realizing you've lived a big part of your life and there's this urgency. I must do what I came to do. Right. That's the urgency. And so for me, it was like, I'm doing exactly what I'm meant to be doing. And I wouldn't trade that back. Wow. Outstanding. Outstanding. So you stepped really fully 
into your bigger life. And that's exactly what you are helping other women to do now too. Yes, absolutely. Because this time needs us to bring all of ourself to this life. You know, it's like, it's, for me, it was really important. Uh, you know, I went, and this is ongoing. This work is ongoing, but it started several years ago. I kept tuning in. What else am I holding back in my life? What else am I not bringing to my work? And it's this ongoing exploration. What else can I bring to it? I wanted to make sure I didn't leave any of me out, but I brought the full expression of myself to it without holding back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else do I bring? And one of my, my dear friends, uh, Judy May Murphy, she, she says it um, similarly to what you're saying. It's like, who do I become next? Yeah. And this is what really the life, the, our life is about, is about growth. And it what, is. Yeah. It is, because that's the nature of our soul. Our soul has such a desire to grow and be all it can be. Yeah. You know, when we are growing, personally and spiritually our light expands our love expands and the rippling effect in the world expands um i can ask you if now that the time right now with us being in situations that we often did not or did not consciously ask for being fired or realizing this yep. is not what what i want to do um is the growth opportunity bigger now because something has already happened is this i'm thinking about this uh post-traumatic growth that you certainly experienced big time after the loss of your, of, of your second son. But this is something also that would be like, is the time right now even the bigger opportunity for more growth because of what's going on? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's and it wouldn't be happening. This is why it's happening. This is precisely why it's happening. And in, in a sense, it's ingenious how some things happened that impacted the entire world. I mean, many of us knew that it would happen, but we had no idea how it was going to be activated. I, I mean, I knew it was going to happen, but I'm going, how is this going to be activated? This awakening, this change, this rebirthing. How, how am I going to, how are we going to change the, the rushing, the running, the overproduction, the destruction in the world? And then the pandemic comes home and sends us all into our rooms, <laughs> virtually, you know, and slowed the whole world down. I mean, that is ingenious in many respects. And can I just ask you, because some of our, our viewers may be wondering when you said, you knew this is coming. How did you know this is coming? Because of okay. the really interesting thing, and I, I won't um, just explain it from where I'm standing, but I was part of an event of quite a few weeks ago where different spiritual communities came together globally for like, a, I think it was like a 20 hour event. And sp different speakers from different backgrounds were speaking. There was Buddhist spiritual leaders, yogic leaders, American Indian spiritual leaders, Christian uh, leaders, and uh, many, um, and they all spoke about the same thing. They all explained it with their own language, depending on where they were standing. And it was profound. Like the American Indian elder said, we knew a pandemic, they even knew a pandemic was coming. They knew it was a pandemic. He said, we knew it very clearly. And he was explaining with all the American Indian symbolism, why they knew it was going to be a pandemic. It, it blew me away. So it's like, so we would tune in. Books have been written decades ago that this time would come. And so um, astrologers have known this from their perspective that this time yeah. was known. So it, it's definitely something that is meant to happen right now, for sure, because it's not just something I'm feeling, but it's lots and lots and lots of groups of people have felt the same. Mm -hmm. And, and what you're saying, these are religious and spiritual leaders from all kinds of different parts of the world and, and belief. And they, they came together saying, okay, a big shift is going to happen, but nobody knew besides, you know, some, some Native American, obviously. Yeah. They had a, a, a sense of a pandemic. Fascinating, fascinating, fascinating. Prasanna, I thank you so much. This is our first conversation out of four to yes. just uh, now bring the... The, the topic home one more time that right now, because of the changes that we are going through already, this is calling to us for a big growth spurt, so to speak. Yes. And also not, you know, not negating 
all the things, the pain and the suffering that's, that's happening for many of us, but using that in our transformation to something yes. better coming, coming out of it. And um, I thank you so much. Next time we are talking about wellness and wealth. So we're taking the next step on a, on a, on a woman's journey today was more about, okay, starting that soul, that soul calling, starting to listen to the soul calling. And then the next step is, as I said, wellness and wealth, because these two areas of our lives are very often enemies. Yeah. <laughs> saying that does not have to be like that. Exactly. They do not have to be change. mortal enemies. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, so please follow us. It's, we're going to have a, three more conversations and wherever you're seeing this video, there's a link below above to decide wherever it's going to be to connect with Prasanna directly, connect uh, with me directly and so that we can keep you updated when we are launching the next conversation. And it's really about empowering you to listen to your soul calling and then take the necessary steps to grow and become the woman that you are so called to be. Yes, absolutely. So I also want to mention that um, there's a, a link below this video. So if you want to receive a free practice, activate your um, femme fortune and freedom, please do so. It comes in a PDF, but it also comes in a recorded uh, meditation with music. And also, if you feel some kind of sense that there is this, something is wanting to be birthed and you want to have some support around that, feel free to reach out and have a chat. There's a chat link as well. You can make time to either talk to me or one of my goddess Amazon strategists. And we can lay out a plan for you to see what that might look like for you to move forward from here so that you can really step into those bigger shoes and into your next expansion, beautiful one. Yes. So thank you very much for being here with us. We see you next time when wealth and wellness become actually friends. They move from yes. yeah. They move from how, how how did you say that the uh, the mortal enemies <laughs> to really good friends. See you there. Bye, everybody. Thank you so thank much. much. Bye for now. Thank you.